so now we know that uh, currents produce magnetism and they produce magnetic fields. So now we want to talk about how does that magnetism produce a force. And so to introduce this, let's go back and talk about what gravity can do and what electricity can do. So in terms of gravity, if you, if you have, let's say, mass number one, and then you got mass number two, and they're gonna be separated by a distance r, they are going to exert forces on each other. And they are going to be pulled together. So gravity always is attracted. And so there's gonna be a force of gravity between those two objects. Then we've got electricity. So this time you're gonna have charge number one and charge number two, and they're gonna be separated by a distance r, and they can be pulled together if they have opposite electrical charges, but if they have like charges, so let's say a positive and a positive, they're going to repel each other. So that's a major difference between electricity and gravity over here. Uh, now we could do the same thing with magnets. So in this case, we could have uh, a magnet and then another magnet. And so each of these magnets would have a north and a south pole. So let's just say for the sake of argument that this is a south pole and then a north pole. And then over here, let's say that this one's a north pole and then this one's a south pole. So opposites attract. So the north pole of one will be attracted to the south pole of the other one and they're gonna come together. So notice that this is kinda similar to electricity because I could take the, this magnet and flip it around so that I have a south pole and a south pole and then they're gonna repel each other. So that would be the the force of magnetism between two magnets. Okay, then you could also have the force of magnetism between two wires. So here you've got a wire that is pointing up and you got another wire over here that's pointing up. So this has an electric current one, one in it. And then this one over here has an electric current two that is also in that direction. So just before I tell you what the answer is, what do you think is gonna happen? So are those two wires, are they going to be repelled? Or are those two wires gonna be pulled together? Or are those two wires, maybe it's gonna do this. So one's gonna flip over on its side as a result of the force of magnetism. So you tell me, what do you think is gonna happen? Okay, now go to this little video here. So find MIT physics uh, demo forces on a current carrying wire on YouTube. And then watch that little video and then see if your prediction was correct. I'll wait. Okay, did you do it? All right, so you should have noticed that if the two wires had currents that were going up, they were attractive. If the two wires had currents that were going down, they were attracted. Uh, but if you had one wire that has a current going up and the other one going down, they uh, repelled. Now this is not what you expected, or I was thinking that you wouldn't expect this to happen because it's like like currents. So we know that like charges, positive, positive, negative, negative, repel. Well, these are like currents, so why do they not repel? So kind of unusual in magnetism. And it gets even stranger uh, when you uh, look at a magnetic field that is going down like this. So this is a magnetic field. Now let's over here, 
let's put a gravitational field that's going down. So this would be G. And then next to it, let's put a electric field that is going down. So in all three cases, we've got a field that is going down. The gravitational field, the electrical field, the magnetic field. Let's take a mass, M, and place it in the gravitational field, and it experiences a force that pulls it down. So notice that the force is in the same direction as the gravitational field. If you take a positive charge, Q, and you place it in the electric field, it also goes down. So it follows the same direction as the electric field. So let's take a positive charge, Q, and place it in that magnetic field and let it go, and nothing happens. It just sits there. So, so that charge doesn't move, but it does move if it's moving. So now let's take the charge Q and let's have it go sideways like this with a certain speed V. Then all of a sudden it will experience a force, but that force is into the board. So it's pointing into the board, it's pointing towards U, so that the B is this way, the V is this way, and the force it's producing is that way. So how in the world can we explain all of this? So we're going to explain this and this by using this idea here. So this is going to be called the right hand rule, and you have to use the right hand for it. So don't use your left hand, because if you do that, everything is backwards. So you have to use your right hand to do it. Uh, and so this finger here, so your first finger, is going to be the direction of the V, or if it's a wire, it would be the direction that the current is moving in. So that's going to be this finger here. All right, then you got the middle finger. So I'm going to point it in this direction so that we don't have any obscenities here. So this finger here is going to be the direction of the magnetic field B. And then you've got your thumb. So the thumb is going to be perpendicular to these two fingers. So it's going to point in that direction, and the thumb is going to be the direction of the magnetic field. So let's try it. So we're going to try to see if we can explain this one here by the use of the right hand rule. So the first step is we got to get our first finger to point in the direction of V. So I need to do this. All right, so this is kind of hard to do. I'm going to expect a lot of contortions if you're one of my students trying to figure all this stuff out. So my finger needs to be pointing that way. All right, now I need to have this finger pointing which way? It needs to be pointing down. Okay, so I need to have it like this and then flip it over, okay, so that this finger is pointing down, but this finger, man, is pointing that way. All right, so now look at my thumb. Which way is my thumb pointing? So my thumb is pointing into the board. And that's exactly what we said would happen. So if you know two of the three fingers, you can figure out what the third finger has to be by using the right hand rule. Now, this one though is a little bit tough, okay? So how can a current going up produce a force on this current over here. So you should know that using the right hand rule, if you point your thumb in the direction of a current, your fingers curl around the, the wire and that's the magnetic field. So that the magnetic field is going to go in this direction 
and then it is going to go towards you. So it's going to go in this direction, and then it's going to go behind the wire, and then it's going to come over here, and then it's going to come out towards me, and then it continues on its journey. So that would be the magnetic field created by that wire. Now let's enlarge it so that this magnetic field comes all the way over to here and it interacts with this wire here. So this wire is carrying current that's going up and it's going to be having a magnetic field that is going into the board towards you, like this. Can we calculate what the direction of the force would be? So what would be the direction of the force on this wire? Current is up, B is that way. What would be the direction of the force? All right, so we get out our right-hand rule, and we're this time the first finger is the direction of the current. So this finger has to be pointing up. Okay, the middle finger, so this finger here, is your B, and it's going to be pointing towards you. Where's my thumb? So my thumb is pointing this way. So this wire would be pulled in that direction. So that would be the force of magnetism acting on it. All right, now I'm going to leave it up to you. But can you do this? Use this wire over here and draw the magnetic field that is surrounding this wire, extend it over to this wire, and then do the same thing with the right hand rule with this one over here. And what you're going to find is this wire is going to be attracted and will want to go in that direction so that the two wires are going to want to go together. And it all can be explained by using the right hand rule. Pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, so for purposes of the exam, don't worry about the two wires, all right? But I should, you should be able to do this one down here uh, and predict which way a object is going to go if you know uh, the direction of the field and if you know the, the, the speed of the particle. So you should be able to do that on the exam. This one is interesting. And you should know this one up here, obviously, that opposites attract on a magnet. All right, in our next segment, we are going to uh, actually calculate the magnitude of the force. So, so far, we've only learned how to predict the direction of the force. But now we want to predict the magnitude of the force, and we'll do that in our next segment.